Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining Arts for All Florida for our adapted art exploration. Let me share my screen real quick. All right. Well, this was going to be in person, which obviously it's not. And it was going to be free exploration time for families to try out adapted art tools and materials. So instead, we're going to provide some slides and I'm going to show you some of the materials that I'm talking about. And these are art materials that would be great for you and your family to be able to create art together. Um, arts provide a wonderful way for children with disabilities to express themselves. Please note that there is a clickable PDF that has links to all of these materials. So um, we don't necessarily endorse any of these sellers. I'm just giving you links for strictly for ease of searching. Um, but that, that PDF is available as well as this presentation. So Arts for All Florida, we are a statewide organization. Um, we're in our 40th year and we provide support and champion arts education and cultural experiences for and by people with disabilities. There's a couple of resources on here that will also be on that clickable PDF. Um, our parent resources page, we have at home art activities that you can do with your family, lesson plans. Um, we have our spotlight on art series, which is 15 to 20 minute YouTube videos created by some of our amazing teaching artists and they're all different types of art. Um, the links are also on that parent resources page. Uh, we have virtual community art classes. So from across the state, you can join us doing dance and movement, theater, um, visual art and music. And then we also have an at home um, activity Facebook group. So again, you'll have all these links on the, the PDF. So today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about some tools and materials that you can try with your family. So we're gonna start out right now with tools that have larger grips or specific adaptations. So um, if you've never played with boom whackers before, these are really fun. They're actually tuned plastic percussion tubes. So they're really thin, kind of almost like PVC pipe. And you can just So they're tuned to different sounds. So this one is a B and this one is an E. So they're really fun um, to play with. They're very easy for kids that have issues with fine motor skills to be able to play music. We also have an adapted recorder. So this recorder actually comes into little pieces. You can move things around. Um, you can move them so that they're in different, way, uh, different order. So if fingers don't necessarily have to line up in order. Um, this recorder can be played by any student that has six usable um, fingers. So it's great for students that are learning the recorder but might not be able to use all 10 of their fingers. All right, some other adapted musical instruments that you can play with uh, are switch op operated instruments. And I'm gonna show you guys a quick video of one of the ones I have in my office. So you can see that students can use the switches to be able to play the musical instrument. And I have to say kids absolutely love playing with this one anytime I take it anywhere. All right, so for our visual arts students, we also have some adapted materials that are larger and have um, specific accommodations. So you can get chubby different brushes. So brushes that have different types of handles on them. They're easier to hold onto ones that have this bulb grip here, um, or you can just get regular ones that are a little bit thicker like that. You can get tabletop scissors. So this would just sit on your table and then students don't have to actually use that scissor motion. They can just press down. Someone can help them feed their, um, their paper through that so they can actually do the cutting themselves. One thing that I always recommend to schools and to parents are loop scissors because a lot of students have a really hard time with that traditional scissor cutting, but it's not necessarily the pressing down, it's the lifting back up. So the loop scissors take care of that. Um, they actually just spring, oops, spring right back open after, uh, not that one because it just broke, but um, spring right back open. So kids don't have to do the gripping back up, they just do the pressing down. Some other things that I love to use for students who have fine motor issues, um, Stabili, Stabilo, Woody, three and ones. This is kind of a colored pencil, watercolor, wax crayon, everything all together. But I like it because it's a really nice big grip. So it's easy for kids to actually hold onto and it makes a really nice mark on our paper here. 
So it's just really nice to use. Um, it is a watercolor. So if you use a brush with some water, you can actually blend it a lot easier. Uh, dot markers, you might see these for bingo, but they're nice, big, they can be used either just to make dots, or you can actually draw with them too, which is really kind of fun because they're nice big markers for kids to use. And then another one that I have found a lot of um, luck with kids using are finger crayons. So they kind of have a bit of a tip and then they have a bulb at the end here, but they're great because they can actually be put on the kids' fingers and they can use them this way or they can actually grip them by that bulb right there. So these are really great for the kids to be able to use as well. So besides um, adapted materials that have already been adapted, you can also get adaptive grips, which I'm sure you guys are pretty familiar with. So some of the ones we've used in the art um, lessons, we have a T-bar, so it just has a little, uh, a little screw there. You can clamp in whatever type of tool you want. Here I have a marker in here, so it's easy for me to kind of grip it like this thinking outside that typical pencil grip, which is very hard for a lot of students. You can get a universal cuff um, that also again has a screw to be able to clamp a material into here. And so here I have a, a marker on here, but this is great for your kids um, who are going to classes and you might not know what tool that they need. This is great for them to use. You can also just get grips like this that can be interchanged. So this is put on to my watercolor pencil, but it's a nice big thick grip. And I also really like the egg grip, I call it. It's just, again, a nice big grip that fits really well into the palm of somebody's hand. And again, you have links to all of these in that PDF. So you can also make your own adapted grips. So um, some of the ones that we've had really good luck with is taking a, whatever your art tool is, and then cutting off the jug of like a um, milk, the handle of a milk jug or an orange juice jug. And you can now put your hand in here and hold on to it um, really well. Makes it really easy to hold on to your tool. You can use a tennis hole or a tennis ball and put a hole in it. You can get closed cell tubing, which kind of looks like this and then cut it into whatever shape works for your student. So here I have again, another T grip um, and I can move, change out the, uh, the, the art tool that's in here. And then I also have the, the angled grip. So this one is really nice because you can kind of hold it like this um, and it's easier to paint with or use as an art tool. The one I like to call the turkey drumstick because it kind of looks like that. Um, you can take whatever type of art tool you want. So I have a mallet and I also have a paintbrush. Um, this is actually just rolled up recycled paper. And then I use um, packing tape. Um, the thin brown packing tape works the best, rolled up. And so now it's a really great grip and it's an easy grip for kids that have fine motor skills to be able to hold onto. So again, you're not having to use that pencil grip anymore. Now you have a nice big thick grip to hold onto. You can also use just cardboard and that tape again and kind of make a handle. So it makes it a lot easier to hold on to certain art tools. If you have access to a 3D printer, you can also 3D print grips. So this is kind of a newer technology, um, but it's really great because you can actually make them specific to what your child's hand is and what their needs are. And there's a bunch of different files online that you can just, uh, if you're not great at building 3D print uh, files, there's a bunch of files online where you can just download them and, um, and then print them using your 3D printer. So these are great as well. So besides our adapted tools or using grips, we also wanna include a variety of senses for our students that have disabilities. So some of the things that I've had a lot of luck with, um, wiki sticks, this is kind of what it looks like. It's uh, essentially a string covered in wax is the best way of describing it, um, but you can build things with it, it sticks together. Uh, and then you can also put it on paper to define the edges of the paper, or you can make a design so your student can kind of color in or paint into those lines. You can add texture gels to your paints. You can use those, everyone's favorite Mr. Sketch scented markers or scented dough. Um, you can use raised line drawing boards. So these are different types of boards. Let me grab one right here. 
And essentially, uh, this one here, has, it's hard to see there, but it has like a screen on it. When you put thick paper on it and use something like a pen, I can draw it here, but you can also, when you flip it over, it's a little hard to see, but you can actually see there is a texture there now and you can actually feel the texture of this. So this creates a raised line or this one actually kind of creates like a pattern, which feels really cool. Uh, the other type that we have just kind of creates a line. So it's a almost a thick um, kind of plastic under there. And again, when you draw on there, if you flip it over, you'll be able to actually see and kind of feel the line that you created. So these are really great for students that might have um, low vision or um, might be blind to be able to learn to draw. You can use something called quick draw paper. So this is really cool. It's essentially like a, a really thick cellulose paper, almost looks like a really, really condensed sponge. And if you used a water-based marker on it, as you draw, I think this could be hard for people to see. So let me make it a little bit thicker here. But as you draw, it actually, it's very hard to see right here. Um, it actually raises up. So it creates a raised line as you're drawing when you're using something that's water-based on there. So again, uh, students that are blind or have low vision can draw and actually feel their drawing as you go along. Um, I will say this paper is a little bit expensive. You can only get it from the American Printing House for the Blind. Again, the link is gonna be on that PDF. But for students who are blind, this is really a great way for them to be able to practice drawing. Uh, another thing you can get is a three doodler. So this is a child safe 3D printing pen. Um, you can use it to actually create things in 3D, but you can also use it to outline uh, on a paper so that they can kind of feel the outlines. Um, I only recommend the, the three doodler because this one is actually child safe. So especially if you have students who are blind or have low vision, uh, you don't wanna use a 3D printing pen that would have a, a hot nub at the end of it. So the three doodler, you can touch any part of it even when it's working and it doesn't get really hot. So it's safe for kids, um, especially kids who are blind or have low vision. But they're really fun. Uh, kids really like using them and as you can kind of see in the pictures here you can either like I said make something in 3D or you can use it to outline and then have your students be able to color in the lines or feel where the edges of something is. So especially for our kids that have sensory integration issues we want to be thinking outside the box for our materials. Um, some things that we've had luck with the color wonder paper if you aren't familiar with this essentially it is um, by Crayola and it's markers that only make color um, on the Color Wonder paper. So it's great for kids who don't like to get their hands dirty. They can actually like create on the paper, but if they get the marker on their hands, they're not gonna be able to see it. Uh, you can also use Model Magic. So Model Magic is kind of an alternative for clay. Um, for some reason, it works really well for students that have sensory aversions. I've had really good luck using this with students. They really seem to enjoy playing with it and they don't, um, they don't have that same issue that they have when they use clay. Some other things that are fun to use, magic noodles. These are essentially um, packing peanuts is what they look like the most, but they're made out of cornstarch. And if you kind of put a little bit of water on the end of one, you can then stick them together. Probably don't do that with the water over the computer, but stick them together and make some really cool different sculptures. So kids seem to really like being able to play with these and the texture of them. Um, many kids that have sensory integration issues seem to like these this texture. Another thing that we've had a lot of luck with is this incredible foam. So it again looks kind of like styrofoam, like little styrofoam balls that is kind of pressed together, but you can make sculptures out of it. It comes out of all different colors and it's non-drying. And again, I found a lot of students um, who have sensory integration issues really like the texture of this. Another really cool thing to use is a making makey. Uh, this is essentially a circuit board that lets you make uh, unique instruments. So I'm gonna show you a quick video of how you use this. So it, that's the circuit board that I mentioned. Um, you make a ground, so this is the ground that I'm doing right there. 
And then you can create any type of instrument you want. I made one with um, foam core and little brass tacks. And you attach it so it's attached to your computer and you can play a musical instrument there. So I'm playing the piano using my Makey Makey. You can see how the alligator clips are attached there. But this is great because you can make unique instruments specific to your student's needs. So if your student isn't able to use that many um, fingers or something that complicated, you can just make a paddle just like that one right there. So if my student's just able to move one hand, again, I'm gonna grab that, that grounding. And now all the student has to be able to do is move one hand to be able to play. They're really fun. Kids uh, find great things to make. Uh, if you Google Makey Makey, you'll see some uh, really amazing instruments people have made before. Oops, didn't need All right, well, I hope you learned uh, um, some new art materials and tools to enjoy with your children. And we are hoping that we will be able to see you in person at Family Cafe next year. Um, if you have any questions, my email is on the screen right now. Feel free to email me. And um, thank you so much. We really enjoyed being able to present to you today.